Hey folks, welcome back to The Cabin Project. We're gonna be taking a look at getting the roof on very soon, but first there's a load of important jobs to do, getting it all prepped up, barge boards, timber, all sorts going on. So let me show you what we've been up to. So the stain is pretty much dried, so that's a good start to the day. Now I'm going to trim back a little bit of the membrane. Remember this is a really shallow pitch roof and it's a low building. So the last thing we want to do is be seeing up underneath the roof. So there's a few things we've done to do uh, to counter that. Firstly, I'm cutting back the membrane just by 50 mil or so. That means it's the black which is coming right to the end. And you won't really see that. But also, the last thing we want to do is wind to get up underneath here, flap this around. Uh, so we're going to put another batten in. This one could have been lower, but instead what we're going to do is just sit a small roofing batten on its end down here. So when you look up the roof, if there's any gap, you'll just see timber and a shadow. So last step is to get our new extra batten on. I'm gonna position it about halfway down this flag. I think. Maybe it needs to sit just above the black. If it sits on the black, it's gonna trap the membrane and black bit together, which means that any water coming down the felt isn't going to be able to get through. If we go above, then we still give ourselves that bit of drape that we've given in between each rafter. So instead, we're going to put the last little batten here, our bonus batten, just at the top of the black. That way, water can come down here. We're not creating a dam. Hopefully, there's no water coming down there anyway, uh, but I can use that top bit as a reference and hopefully when you look up at eye level we're not going to see this little strip of green here you won't see the top of it but it could I think it'll be dark enough under there So we decided to put some extra timber on because we thought it was too light, the building. So we're going to put these um, fascia boards on. We've done the other end already. They're Douglas fir boards, and it was just an opportunist buy at auction, just the whole pack of them. Some of them were a bit knotty or split at the end, so we picked out four good ones for these barge boards. The rest of them I'm going to be cutting down and planing for window trims. So these should be cut. We've measured everything up. So what we're going to do now is fix them onto the end of this ladder 
we've decided that we're going to set them down from the top so they hang down 200 mil and then when we put our barge board trim which is the black painted uh, finish that came with the roof the seal stuff it will come down it will cover about half of these boards but then leave a nice feature bit of the timber board underneath and it just makes it look when we're looking at the other end it makes it look a little bit more like a substantial building rather than having a really thin roof line so that's what we're going to do and we'll paint them then as well once they're up before we put the metal trim on So that was the stainless steel nails in that one. So they're 65 mil, which gives them kind of 45, 50 mil into the timber behind. So it's anchored nice and strong. The air, so they're every 600. The only thing is, because we're going into quite a small timber, 75 mil kind of sub timber, the bottom 100 mil or so is a little bit exposed. But that said, they're pretty strong timbers. One option is therefore to put like a feature block halfway a bit like a purlin showing and that might just pull it in there we've got another one at the bottom and we could do another one at the top just to avoid any chance of these twisting they're pretty dry but they were green timber when i bought them so one side to go and then we are going to be onto the roof So we put the membrane up and the timbers on the roof. I'll show you that in a second. But the next thing to do was to get our fascia boards on. We went with these. They're a treated redwood uh, fascia board. So you can see that up there all the way along. And that's nailed in with three stainless steel screw, uh, nails. So they should disappear by the time we got the stain on there. It's a matte finish as well. There's going to be another coat on there. I'm going to sand it back, finish it nicely. And then as we move all the way along, you can see we've got that black plastic starter. That's kind of what the membrane finishes on. And that's gonna be our drip edge coming into the gutter. So we are now at a point where pretty much all of the roof line is done. Let me show you what we did with the barge boards because that's come out really nice as well. So this is the Douglas fir barge boards. Everything's gonna get painted in that black stain. I was tempted to leave them, but I think if we keep the roof line all in black, and then we'll go with our timber cladding, which we haven't decided on, uh, on the walls, and that'll work nicely. So we've carried this long, overshot the fascia board a bit. All I need to do now is just run a square cut back in, a bit like we did at the old house. So it just has a little bit of a less, less of a sharp finish there. So they're all done. We've simply run over them with a 80 grit. We left them fairly natural. That way, when we use that black stain, all of the kind of wood grain will show through. And then along this side here, you can see we stalled a bit. Uh, we were running short of the eave starter trays. So fascia boards on, that can have a coat of paint, but we're not going to get around to doing the roof this side. So the priority is to get the other side done completely. And then I can get this all prepped up on my own. And then next time there's two of us here, we can get the rest of the sheets up. There's 17 sheets and of the seal roofing, but we'll have a look at that in the next video. This side is quite a good way of seeing everything that's going on. So we've got the starter here. Then we've got our membrane sat down. It's cut back a little bit. We're concerned because it's a low roof and we're higher up on the fields around uh, that you could see up and see this flapping around. So we put this, uh, this batten in. It's cut down to exactly the same or a little bit less in here. So it'll just mean that when you look up, that's all you'll see. We're not going to be fixing into that one, but it may support the roof. Then our battens or 
should be called purlins, I guess, are spaced at 1200 sensors, which is plenty for our 0.7 mil steel. It's really pre pretty much thick commercial grade stuff. Uh, so that will be the span. And then at the top, rather than take our top batten all the way up to the ridge, this last purlin up here, we set down 350, 400 from the ridge. What that means is we can feed our flap of membrane from one side over the other side. So when we take the two apart and rejoin them, or if it's ever relocated, if we ever sell it as a building, then there's, well, it just means that the whole thing is covered underneath the roofing. But there we go. I think we are now at a point where we can finally say roof prep is done. We now need to do a bit of thinking get this roofing down and work out the best way to get the sheets up on the roof. We made this up as we went along because this is a little bit unconventional the way we're doing things, as always, but never mind, it's all good and it all makes sense to us. The roof is done. Thank you everyone for all your support through this, especially Speedy for sponsoring the series. We're gonna leave it there. Make sure you keep an eye out for the next video, which should hopefully get a lid on this thing and get it all roofed in. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.